We work so you can play. Mini War Gaming's The Fate of Fate You. Matthew here from MiniWarGaming.com and welcome to the next in the set of missions for the Tyranid Necron campaign, the battle for the Tomb World Fayum. Now I've already done the storytelling element of this in a previous video. If you have not yet watched that, I strongly suggest that you do. That way you can understand why the missions are being created the way they are. There will be a link in the video description that will go to the, the storytelling aspect of this. And then we'll be playing two missions today as part of the Mission 2 set. All these will be in pairs. We had Mission 1A and 1B last week. And this week you're going to see Mission 2A and 2B. And next week you'll see 3A and 3B until we do a total of six pairs of missions to round out this entire story. So we're already seeing some escalation happen in this one with some new units, not just gene stealers and lictors. But the mission we're going to do first is basically reactivating the scythe matrices in this case the one matrix. And that is basically where the Steve's Necrons need to, led by Overlord Sobek, need to come in and reactivate and repair some of the, the stuff in the Tomb World Catacombs. This is actually going to be fought in the Tomb World Catacombs. But the Broodlord has shown up seeking his prey and wanting to destroy any chance that he has of getting more reinforcements. So it'll be a battle between the Arch Nemesis, Arch Nemesis. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> And so sit back, relax, and enjoy. And after you finish this one, there will be a link in the description as well to see the next mission, which will be the other army arriving at the outpost, the communications array, which I describe in the storytelling aspect as well. And that'll be available for vault members. So vault members, you can just click the link and go and watch that. If you're not a vault member, of course, you can join for free. Just click the link actually to go and watch it, and it'll give you all the details of how you can sign up for a free seven-day trial so you can get instant access to these missions and all the other videos in the vault as well. So let's jump right into this and take a look at the scenario. We've already set up, this is, this is supposed to represent Necron catacombs. I do wish that we had more Necron terrain, but I did the best with what we could. So most of the Necron, the, all the Necron vehicles that you see here are not part of Steve's Necron army, or S Overlord Sobek's Necron army is what I should really say. They are just part of the catacombs, and that's why I put smoke in all of them, just to kind of represent that. And in the middle here we have our scythe matrix. And so this is what he's trying to activate, and that's the objective right there in the middle. And so what we did is we rolled for D6 plus three objectives. We ended up rolling us to have seven objectives plus the one in the middle. And then we placed them just like regular objective markers. So we got one, two, and then we got a couple of these um, generator ones. Because really I wish they could all be generator looking ones, but we don't have that. So we're just marking it that way. So basically they form a circle. It's just kind of the way they turned out as we went back and forth. Each objective marker is toughness six, three wounds, and a three plus save. Whereas the Knight Scythe, or the Scythe Matrix is a toughness six, six wounds with a two plus save. And my objective as a Tyranid is, is to destroy as many as I can. And uh, the Necron objective is to repair as many as you can. Now as soon as one of us has either destroyed or repaired three, so if the Necrons have repaired three, they can then move in to repair the Scythe Matrix. And as soon as I've destroyed three, which I'm already like beside three of them, so it's going to happen rather quickly, then I can move in to destroy the Scythe Matrix. And, uh, and that's it. Whoever activates or destroys the Scythe Matrix wins. That is the sole objective. And we already rolled off for deployment and everything, so you can see that we are fully deployed. The Tyranids are able to bring in bigger organisms this time because unbeknownst to the Necrons, the High Fleet is actually not too far off and is already seeding the world. So we have some warriors. Venom Thropes, even some Ripper Swarms, and some more Warriors. And then we got our Lictor Gene Stealer Force that's arrived with the Broodlord, of course, back here, getting ready to come in and fight. And on this side, Overlord Sobek couldn't bring in any of his larger vehicles because this is all underground. So he brought in a large group of Warriors and Immortals to gun down as much as he possibly could. And of course, having the Necron Lords, too, that he's finally been able to reanimate and get back out to help lead his forces. And the, the Tyranids will go first, unless the Necrons manage to steal the initiative. Even though I hate that rule so much, I still like to include it in the campaigns because it could produce some very interesting twist to the storyline. That's how I view that. Not for competitive, but for story. It's kind of fun. So we're going to go into this and roll to see if we steal the initiative. Sorry, I actually made a big mistake there. The Necrons actually rolled for first turn and get it unless I steal the initiative. So that was backwards. So it's actually Necrons get first turn. So I'm going to roll right now to see if I roll a six. 
Nope, no stealing of the initiative. So we're gonna go into Necron's turn one. There is no turn limit to this game. It is just until either one side is wiped out or until this is destroyed. Now, of course, if the Tyrion has managed to destroy enough of the objectives that he's not able to activate the one in the middle, then uh, that obviously produces some interesting results there as well, that he will not be able to activate it. But it doesn't mean that I win, because it's only on a win that I gain the preferred enemy. So it's quite possible this will result in a draw, and neither of us get our advantages. So Necrons, turn one. Necrons get moving up. Now in order for them to activate an objective, they have to go into base contact with it, and then one of the models has to forfeit its shooting, and then the entire squad is not allowed to assault. shouldn't actually take you too long to activate a few of these. It'll just be a matter of defending them from the Tyranids. Moving up around the wrecked uh, Ghost Art. Oh wow, I had a little <laughs> brain fart right there. Moving up, getting ready to activate some of the objectives. Like you're going to be able to have two right off the bat. Redo. So this group right here, this guy's going to forfeit his shooting and activate this. So that gives him one objective. And the rest of them are going to fire at this Lictor, who's going to have a good four plus cover save, but we'll, we'll see what happens to him. So only three could see it. So rapid fire, six shots, hitting on threes, only three hits, wounding on fours, two wounds, four plus cover, one wound. So he's down to two wounds. Okay, this guy is going to forfeit his shooting and activate this one. So that gives two activated for the Necrons. And the rest are going to run. So only the one can't run. And they're going to run one inch. So not really too far. Overlord Sobek's group is going to run, hopefully far. Five inches, that's better. Very close quarter. Let's see how this turns out. This group is going to run as well. Well, off the table. Three inches. So now going to the Tyranid's turn, there is synapse on both of the outlying lictors. And of course, for the gene sealers, it doesn't matter except to make them fearless. So no instinctive behavior required. This lictor is going to move. Oh, it's got spider webs on it. I guess that makes sense. This lictor moves up the middle. These gene cells are going to start scuttling up the side towards their prey. They're ticked off. I want to take down Overlord Sobek again. They don't like the fact that he can reanimate. It kind of bothers them. Ripper swarms will advance. They're not beasts like the scarab swarms. They only get to move six. Difficult terrain for the Venomthropes. Five inches. This lets them just get on. Well, this one's going to stay below. So they want to provide their shrouded bubble as far as possible. This lictor will advance up as well. These chainsaws are going to move up. They're going to take advantage of cover as much as possible. Especially once those venomthropes start providing them shrouded. That'll be fun. And these ones are going to try to take care of this objective, so they're going to move up. And the warriors will try to take care of this objective. So I'll give me the three right away. So if I'm lucky and get all three of these down, actually I got possibility of four, then I can start going for the center one. Not with that lifter, that's not why he's stuck up there. He's going up hunting. So shooting phase, nine shots from the death spitters from these warriors into this objective. Hitting on fours. Oh, only three hits and winning on fives. And no wounds, all right. Same thing from this group of warriors into this objective. Hitting on fours. Lots of hits for that one. Wounding on five. Two wounds. Three plus save. He takes a wound. So it is down to two. This lictor is going to fire his flesh hooks into it. Two shots hitting on fours. And it's strength six, so it's wounding on fours. Three plus save. Oh, it takes a wound. So it is down to two. These gene sealers will run six inches. They're going to move up, get ready to get blasted to pieces by those immortals, but they will have some help from Venomthropes right behind them. Venomthropes are going to run. Five inches, that's good. 
So you're gonna move up here to provide the bubble down to them. And up here to provide the bubble to everybody else. Ripper swarms, five inches. So they're just gonna zip up to here for now. You stay up there. This lictor, six inches. Funk, right up to the next one. And then this group of gene stealers, one inch. Hey, they run like their Necron counterparts over there. Then the salt phase, the is gonna charge into this one. And the warriors are gonna charge into this one. And these warriors are gonna charge into this one. And I'll actually roll for these guys. Seven inch charge into this one. Piece of cake. Starting with this lictor, he's got five attacks against this objective. The, the objectives are gonna be weapon skill one, so we hit it on threes. Strength six versus toughness six, so four is to wound, and rending. So one rending and one wound, so it might be dead. One three plus save. Oh, it is dead. And it gets torn to shreds by that lictor, who now is out in the open because this thing just kind of a, or I guess, no, like, I guess it just gets a little bit of smoke on it because it doesn't make sense for the whole thing yeah, to disappear. Yeah. And this group of warriors against that objective. Warriors have 12 attacks in total, hitting on threes. Lots of hits. But wounding only on sixes. No wounds. And this group of warriors against that objective. And they hit on threes. So lots of hits, nine hits. They wounded on sixes. One wound. Three plus save though. Oh man, these things really don't have armor, do they? But it still survives, down to one wound. Now here, the Broodlord will go first at initiative seven. He's got five attacks, hitting on threes. Oh, five hits. So he's got adrenal glands and toxin sac, so he's strength six right now on the charge, and poison, so he wounds on fours, re-rolling, rending. Oh, no re-rolling. So one rending, and then four regular. Three plus save, and it's down to one wound. And then we got 10 Gene Stealers with Siding Talons, so that would be 40 attacks. I'm just gonna do 10 of those attacks. It's probably all it needs. Hits on threes. Yeah, let's see. Six hit, and they are poison as well, so they wound on fours rending. And there's the rending. There you go. So that's two down for the Tyranids. So they have to kill one more before they can go for the one in the middle. And that is the end of turn one. So the Necrons have managed to reactivate two of them and the Tyranids have managed to destroy two of them. So in this next round, we should actually see the, the potential for going for the one in the middle, although the Tyranids are nice and close. And the, the, the Necrons are gonna really have to set up a gun line to take care of that. So we got three groups of Canop Tech units that could be arriving, so three plus reserve rolls for each of them. Three plus for the Scarabs? Nope. Huh. Raids? Yes. And the other spiders? Yes. So we've added some rules in for the deep striking for the Canatech units that they can only miss half if they land on an enemy unit. Otherwise, they're like drop pods where they just reduce their scatter distance to where it's safe. So he's gonna attempt to, scatter, to deep strike the rays right here. So roll for scatter. Perfect. Oh, you're supposed to use 2d6. Doesn't matter, you gotta, you gotta hit. So they're gonna provide some resistance to me getting towards the middle with their three plus invulnerable saves and all. And he's gonna have the Scarabs forms try to deep strike up here six inches back, so that'll actually just bring them right to the edge of the board. So they look like they're gonna be a distraction unit to slow down my guys from the conquest that they're after. These warriors are gonna move up and they're gonna to try to take care of this lictor. They just saw claw apart the, the generator that they were going after. Can you imagine if you're just like walking towards the generator and all of a sudden these humongous talons start just punching their way through it. The immortals advance up as the gene sealers approach them. Very brave. Play space hockey. Stay away from the gene stealers. Crowd around it. These guys are moving up, getting ready to reactivate that piece of equipment, whether it's a generator or some other important circuitry for the Necrons. And also getting ready to gun down any gene stealers that they can. And these guys need to move up so they can reinforce the rest. So otherwise, they're just going to be out of the fight. Scarabs are going to run three inches. They're moving closer to the Tyranus, just beckoning them in. And this group of warriors is going to rapid fire into the lifter. So lots of rapid fire shots hitting on threes. Lots of hits. Staff of Light, of course, missing mostly. Wounding on fours, except for the one black, which wounds on three. 
Oh no, I think he's dead. Four up cover save, because he's stealthed. Oh, he makes a lot of them, but fails four and dies. I can't complain, he did his job, but then he gets gunned down. And stuck to the smoke. Immortals are then going to rapid fire their Gauss weapons in the Gene Sealers, who are shrouded, so they will have a five plus cover. Hitting on threes. Well, a few misses, but a lot of hits too. Wounding on threes. Good number there. So five plus cover save from Shrouded. And I make three of them, so seven die. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So still four Gene Stealers alive. And these warriors are gonna fire into these Gene Stealers. He's gonna choose to focus fire so he does not hit the ones that are in ruins. It's only a few shots anyways. Hitting on threes. Wounding on fours. So four wounds. So five plus cover to those in the open, because they have stealth. Or shrouded, sorry. So three die. So that'll be these three. Three of these guys have particle casters, which is a strength six pistol. They're gonna fire it as a lictor. Hitting on threes. Oh, that's too bad. And winning on fours. And I've got a six plus save for being stealthed. Fail it. So it's down to two wounds. And he's ticked. And he's gonna run this last squad right here. Two inches. So they're not too enthusiastic to get up into the party. That Necron Lord will get will get whipped afterwards. Do they feel that? Do they feel pain anymore? I don't think so. Yeah. But they don't have feel no pain. Oh. And that is the end of Necron's turn too. And I didn't reactivate this one yet because he's so focused on killing gene stealers. But uh, it's right there and it'll be hard for me to get to it anyway. So he should be okay oh, unless these gene stealers get to him. And the Tyranids have destroyed two objectives and he has activated two. So we're going into Tyranids turn two. This Lictor is going to move up. He wants to engage those raids. Instinctive behavior on this Lictor. Leadership 10. Oh, whew, he made it. The six inches will bring him here. He's going warrior hunting. These guys just can't resist moving up. Now I, gotta, I can't move their full six because I got to get the guys in the back into coherency with them. So they're all going to move up. Venom Throats going through difficult terrain. Six inches. So it's three to go down and then three inches forward. Let's we'll we'll move up. Provide their bubble as much as possible. And these four gene sealers are going to move up towards those immortals. But they'll stay within six inches of the Venom Throats so they can have shrouded on their charge in. Ripper Swarms are moving over to engage the Scarab Swarms. Swarms versus swarms. And these guys are just going to stay an inch away just to show that they're not in close combat with it so they can shoot it first. As will these guys. And the Broodlord and his group are going to start advancing this way. As he senses the presence of an enemy that he's tasted before. And he doesn't, doesn't like that. He wants to go after him again. So nine shots from the Death Spitters into the objective. Hitting on fours, good amount of hits. Winning on fives, oh, only oh, one wound. Three plus save, That one. he makes it. Same thing from these three into that objective. Hitting on fours, wounding on fives. Oh, Two wounds. Three plus save, oh, it's alive. Two shots from the Lictor's flesh hooks. Hitting on fours, wounding on fours, nothing. Spine fists, I believe it's three shots each, I'll double check that into these Scarab Swarms. And I was wrong, they are four shots each. They're only Blissed Skill 2, but they are Twin Linked, Strength 3. So hidden on fives. And re-rolling. And re-rolling. Oh, there's a few more. Wounding on fours. Ooh, a bunch of wounds. So they are AT5, which ignores his armor, but I'm shooting mostly through my own warrior, so he has a five plus cover. Oh, oh. so one base dies. Yeah, the closest one. And now they are going to declare an assault. And it's not through difficult, because it don't it can't go through your guys. But so I just have to make this distance. And I need six. I got eight. Charge into the nearest one that I can get to. These gene sealers will declare a charge against the immortals. We'll overwatch. So some are within rapid fire, so you got 17 shots hitting on sixes. Oh, three hits. And threes to wound. 
Oh, all three wounds. I do have shrouded, so they will take a five plus cover and two die. So the two of the front go down. I was hoping that he would fail one of those and I'd make one of those or something like that. And then the rest will try to charge. It's now a nine inch charge with fleet. Uh, I, uh, gotta roll a five plus if I reroll this one. Somebody pointed out with fleet you only get to reroll one of them, but that's not true. With fleet you can reroll any number of them. So I will reroll this one because I don't think I want to try to get better than a four. No! Hey, they made it! So he actually gets there just, and he'll be right behind him. So hopefully I can uh, snack on a couple of them before I die. Stuff some wounds. And we'll charge here, and we'll charge here. The Lictor's gonna declare a charge against the Warriors. Are they gonna overwatch against them? Absolutely. Because if they don't and he doesn't make it, they can overwatch against the Jane Steelers. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Yeah, I'm sure Okay, because if he gets in, then you don't get to overwatch anybody. Yeah. 14 shots from those who can see him. Sixes. Oh, what is up with that? Forest of Wounds. Oh. oh, not enough to kill him. Six plus cover. Nope, he's down to one wound. Hey, you can't complain about that one, taking him down to one wound. Seven inch charge. He makes it. That's not scary, I don't know what is. And then these gene sellers will charge as well. And they will also need seven. Eight. They got it. So, unfortunately, means not all of them will be in the fight. But that's okay. Hopefully this will be enough to make the Necrons panic and run away. So I can break down this side. And on top of that, he hasn't reactivated this objective yet. And so if I can make them run from it, then he's still only at two objectives. And he'll have to push into my territory to get the other one. Okay, so we're going to start with the swarms versus the swarms. So we're going to do a pile in here. And I'll say this guy's not in. And so we'll have these five attacking with five attacks each. And hitting on fours, because we're both weapon skill two. And wounding on fours. Watch out. Bunch Ooh. of wounds. Five plus armor. And both of them are dead. But they do get to hit back because they're the same initiative. So these two do go down. But they'll get to strike back. These two are the nearest. This will matter a little bit because they have Entropic Strike. So they could actually strip off the armor save of any ones that survive. Eight attacks in on fours. So four wounds. Sorry, I meant four hits. Now four is to wound. Three wounds. And then any, if I fail any of these six plus armor saves. Hey, so I made one, so the guy loses two wounds, but he also loses a six yeah. plus armor. So this guy will go down to one wound, and he no longer has an armor save. But win combat, because these guys are wiped out. And then they will consolidate six inches, so they're just gonna zip up. They can join the rest of the fight as much as possible. So moving them up. Headless Gene Sealer will be in, and the rest of the guys will not be part of this fight. Well, not until they pile in. So we'll start with the Lictor first. Five attacks. He hits on threes. So four hits. And he's strength six rending, so winning on twos. Oh, two ones. Whatever. Five plus. Oh, oh, oh. Lictor does nothing. Then we got four Gene Sealers, three attacks each attacking. All right, so hitting on threes. Only a few misses. These guys have Toxin Sacks, so they're going to wound on fours, re-rolling. And they are also rending. Wow, that was a really bad roll. Three out of eight. It's not really bad. Oh, come on! That's oh. average for one roll, not for the re-roll. And wound you have a four plus save. Three go down. Yeah, no, nope. take them from the front. And then they pile in. Actually, I think everybody will be in, yeah. so let's just take them from the back. And then you pile in. And strike back. So these five are going to attack the Lictor. Hitting on fours. Oh no! The Lord completely missed. And then wounding on fours. One wound. Oh, he's got a, he's got a five plus armor. Bah! He's oh, dead. Good. And he does nothing except soak up the overwatch before he dies. And the three guys on the Gene Stealers. Hitting on fours. And wounding on fours. Nothing. So the Necrons lost that fight by two, so they have to make a leadership eight roll. And they're good. Three reanimations with the Resurrection Orb. One gets one. back up. So one stands back up. And these guys pile in another three inches. And that combat is ongoing. And then these Gene Sealer will pile in and see what they can do against the Immortals. So six attacks. Hitting on threes. Come on! Oh, only four hits. Wounding on fours, re-rolling. Two so far. Give me two sixes. 
Oh, All right, you know what? I'll take I'll take four hits. Three plus me? armor save. And there are four in front of the overlords, so two die. So in this case, we will take them from the front because the guys are far enough back that not everybody's going to get into this fight. So these guys are going to pile in. These two will get in. Overlord Sobek will get in. I think this guy will get in as well with this three inch. And then the rest will be out. Three attacks from Immortals, hitting on fours. Two hits, winning on fours. Nothing. Oh. Three attacks from the Overlord. Oh no, he misses completely. Overlord Sobek, what's wrong with you? Sobek's the worst Overlord ever. <laughs> and he's leading your forces for this whole campaign. I need a usurper. <laughs> Or a Catan that comes out and beheads them and takes over. Anything! <laughs> this guy's in charge now, Larry. Larry! <laughs> Larry the Necro's in charge now. <laughs> so we lost by two, so leadership eight, <coughs> check. Go on, you can do this! Oh, he's yeah. fine. Resurrections, you have, you have an orb for this one? I do. Okay, that makes all, both of them come back. So in the end, no casualties on either side, but a very close call for Sobek. But the Gene says are dead next turn. But at least we'll hold you off for a turn. I guess I can't really ask for more than that. These three warriors against the objective. And we got 12 attacks, hitting on four. Threes. Lots of hits, but only wounding on sixes. One wound. Three plus save. Failed. Uh, which one? So it's down to two. And these three are going to try to finish off that one that only has one wound left. Hitting on threes. Lots of hits. Wounding on sixes. Two wounds. And three plus save. Oh, it's down! That is three objectives for the Tyranids, which means they are able to go after the Scythe Matrix next turn. So end of turn two. Very tough spot for the Necrons, not because they've lost a lot of guys, because they've lost hardly any, but because the objective is right there, and there are the Broodlord is coming around that corner. He wants to strike down that Scythe Matrix and win this mission so that those Night Sides will not be coming into future games. And Sobek is tied up by two little piddly gene stealers. This Lictor did not charge his race. At first that was an accident, but afterwards I was glad that they didn't because now he's blocking that and forcing them to deal with a couple different things. And these warriors over here are tied up. So Tyranid forces are punching through and will be going for the Scythe Matrix next turn unless he can do something about that. Three plus for the other reserves. And they're just, they're just not arriving. So a tough choice for the Rays because he needs to get this objective as uh, I've destroyed all the other ones and there's only one more over there. So if both of these go down, it'll be impossible for the Necrons to reactivate the Scythe Matrix. So he's gonna jump these guys over here to help out with this fight and abandon the middle objective there. So that'll be very tough. Let's see what he'll do next. This group is moving up to the middle. We're gonna see what they can do to protect that objective. I bet we don't have like Overwatch Overwatch where you can be like, I'm not gonna fire until something moves into my view. I and mean, it can fire at like the <laughs> Gene Steelers who come around the corner looking looking for that objective. They're my gun you. This little group is kind of trapped over here, but they can stay an inch away from the Gene Steelers by moving this way. They're going to start to move towards the middle as well. It's really got to secure the Scythe Matrix. He's in trouble otherwise. These warriors are going to take some shots at the Lictor, who right now is both stealth and shrouded. Because he's shrouded from the Venomthrope and he has his own rule of being stealth all the time. So he's blending into the background with a cloud of gas around him. So nine shots at a distance, hitting on threes. Ooh, not too good. Only five hits. Wounding on fours. Three wounds. I've got two wounds left with a four plus cover. Up, up. Oh, and he dies. Perfect. And the lictor goes down. And this group of warriors is going to run. Overlord Sobek is like, right, where are you going? <laughs> Help me. And they run two inches. He distracted them. But oh well. Or maybe the gene still is right beside them distracted them. Who knows? And the rays are going to charge in. Now it's going to be technically through difficult terrain, but they ignored it. Difficult terrain, and uh, so they'll be. But they'll be initiative one still. And so this guy will have to charge over here to be able to get his base in. So these two have whip coils. So these two genes, those will be down to initiative one with them, but the rest will be initiative six. And we'll start with this fight. Now I have all initiative six except for these two gene stealers. So I've got uh, one gene stealer has to attack there. And then this one has a choice, and the other three have to attack the, the Wraiths. So only the one gene stealer will attack the Warriors. The rest will attack the Wraiths. So two attacks, hitting on threes, and winning on fours, re-rolling. So one wounds, one dead. That's like almost how many I killed last time with more attacks. So one goes down. And then four still at initiative six against the Wraiths, hitting on threes. Wounding on fours, re-rolling. 
Oh, oh, there we go. Rending doesn't matter. They have three plus and vulnerable. And three plus saves. Oh my oh. goodness! All right, I think the gene stealers are dead. <laughs> and I'll do my two gene stealers who are at initiative one, just because. We got four hits. And, well, get to reroll. One wound. No wounds. Wow, okay, I'm dead. And then we've got five attacks from the rays with four attacks each, so 20 attacks. So hitting on fours. Ooh, lots of hits. Wounding on twos, rending. Oh, two rending, and the rest, except for one wounded. Five plus save. Yeah, I'm all dead. So that'll wipe all these guys out. We got one reanimation test to do. Four plus reanimation, and he comes back. And now this fight, the two gene stealers will see if they can make Overlord Sobek run. Four attacks, hitting on threes. Four hits, wounding on fours, re-rolling. Oh, two rending, three rending. And so Sobek is actually third in line to get hit. So I'm gonna do the rending ones first, so they'll kill two immortals. And then he's gotta do a three plus invulnerable and then a two plus armor. So three plus invulnerable, mix it. Two plus armor for the last one. Oh, it was almost on a one there. So two will go down and then the rest will pile in. And then the rest will pile in. I think they're all gonna be in the fight now. Except, no, except for the guy in the back. Seven immortals attacking, hit on fours. Ooh, good solid hit. On fours. Oh no, only one. My plus armor. Oh, I fail it. And the overlord. Hits twice and he wounds on twos. They, oh, God. and he barely finishes off the last one. I really wanted to see him whiff that and then run. It just would be happy. It'd make, it would make me happy. And resurrection for the two that went down and one stands back up. So one stands back up and they're consolidating. Technically they should consolidate first, just so you know that. That's how the rule normally works. And they consolidate one inch. And that is the end of Necron's turn three. So he's having no problem killing the Tyranid units. But what he does have now have a problem with is I can now go for the center objective. It does have six wounds and a two plus save, but the Broodlord and his posse are nice and close to it. So we're gonna go into Tyranid's turn three. So the Venomthropes are gonna do something that's out of character. They're gonna act as bodyguard. They're gonna block things from being able to come in. It does lessen how much I can see it, but this way if I don't manage to destroy it, the, the rays can't just jump over and activate it in their shooting phase. And the warriors are going to move forward, and these warriors are going to leave this objective behind, because he'll have no problem now activating that other objective. And we got the Ripper Swarms coming up. If I can't take the objective in one turn, then I'm going to gun down some guys and this provides you with overall headaches. And then we got these guys coming in. They're going to have to do a very... I want them to roll a nice high charge so as many of them as possible can cram into that alleyway. Get a lot of attacks in there. Because six wounds with a two plus save is nothing to, to laugh at. Although with rending and poison, that'll help. In the shooting phase of Venanthropes are going to run. Six inches, that's good. That'll allow them to get in front of this objective, so they're not blocking the gene cells. Get off of each other. Stupid tentacles. There we go. Yeah, so they're not gonna block the gene cells from getting there. Let's take some pot shots. Death spitters into the objective. Nine shots, hit on fours. Oh, two hits, winning on six, fives. Nothing. The other ones can't see it, so they'll run. Three inches. Let's just move up a little bit. And these rippers are gonna fire at this group of warriors. 24 shots, hitting on fives. Here. Oh, hit. Twin linked. Oh, there's a few more. Wounding on fives. Oh, a bunch of wounds. Actually, just five wounds. So <laughs> four plus save, because you'll get cover or there, or just your armor. So four. Well, what's the danger when you get hit? The Lord is actually second, so we're gonna start with the guy in front. Four plus, he's alive. Four plus again, he's alive. Five, alive. And whatever, okay! <laughs> Lanthropes are already ran, but no, they don't have any oh, shooting. Yeah. The sw then these swarms are gonna declare a charge against the warriors who can overwatch. So 10 shots from the ones who can see, plus the over or from across the Lord, hitting on sixes. Four hits. Whites win on threes, black on twos. So three wins. So the one in front goes down, so it'll be harder charge. Eight inch charge, no fleet. Three inches, I fell. So charging this objective, I need three inches. Really, I want like 10 or 11 so I can get everybody piled in there. Three inches. 
So I make seven, I'm gonna re-roll the two. I'll make a oh. six. So I've already pre-measured this charge. The and the, oh yeah, the Broodlord's in. Only the front five are gonna get in. So one, two, three, four, five. And then the rest will not be in. Now, I don't stay engaged in the next turn, so I don't get to automatically strike it during his turn. Here goes nothing. Six wounds to punch through to win. Can the Broodlord and his group do it? No. And tick off Overlord Sobek even more? No. no. Uh, it's, it's, it's Necron piece of technology. It'll survive. Maybe Sobek built it so it won't survive. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so sure anymore. <laughs> Five attacks from the Broodlord, hitting on threes. Four hits. Four is re-rolling. Oh, there's a, there's a rending. So one rending, so it's already down to five wounds, and you got three two plus save. Two plus! Oh, it's oh. down to four wounds! So it's now down to four wounds. And now these guys all have sighting talent, so they're actually four attacks each. So 16 attacks from the other guys. 16 attacks, they down threes. Oh, a few misses. Poison, so wounding on fours. Actually, I'm strength five right now because they had charged and they had adrenal glands. Oh no, I didn't give them adrenal glands, just the brute lord. Okay, sorry. So they wound on fours because of poison. Rending. One rending! So it's down to three wounds and five wounds. Now it's not likely, but if you roll three ones, you lose. Uh, uh, no! So it survives at three wounds, but unfortunately has no way to get to these guys until he punches through those venom throats. So hopefully that'll. Hope that'll work. We'll see. So the end of turn three altogether. The Necrons have two objectives activated. They have to activate one more, which means that group will have to stay back. And we've knocked this Scythe Matrix down to three wounds. I don't get to attack it in his turn, so but I will get the charge bonus on my turn, so it counts as like disengaging every time. And we're going into Necrons turn four. Can they punch through and do enough damage to take down the Broodlord and his group and eliminate the Tyranid threat? The Scarabs will automatically attack this round, taking a big chance, and, uh -oh. uh oh, actually I think they'll be okay. So it scatters them back to here, so they don't mishap, but they are also not where they were starting. So the Rays are going to jump around and flank the Gene Stealers and force them to fight, which if that's successful, which it should be, then uh, the Gene Stealers are in trouble and I'll have no easy way to take down. A couple of shots. These guys are going to move up so they, some of them can take some shots while the other ones hang back to restore power to that last part. And these warriors are going to move up so they can provide some firepower against some targets of opportunity, whatever that'll be. Sobek is going after his old nemesis. If everybody else can punch through those venom throats, and he can try to charge the Broodlord. That's what he wants to do. You can bet you there will be a challenge. That's a real straight in the front. These guys are going to advance. And he's pre-measured this, that's why it looks so wonky the way he's moving them. Going after those rippers before they have a chance to charge in. The shooting phase, this group is going to go first and he's going to activate. So he now officially has three. As long as they don't punch through and destroy one of them, then he should be fine. And then the rest are going, the ones that can, we're going to fire at those venomthropes. So a few rapid fire shots, hitting on threes. Lots of hits, wounding on fours. And I will have a two plus cover. So four wounds. Plus covered. Oh, I do take a wound. That's the closest one will be down to one wound. Right there. And this group is going to rapid fire into the Venomthropes as well, and I'll only get five plus cover from this. So 20 rapid fire shots hit on threes. Ooh, good shots. And he's really hoping to kill them. Four is the wound. Oh, way above average for all of this. Well, it's only fair since you rolled so above average that I just rolled tons of fives, fives and sixes. That's not tons of fives and sixes, they're dead. And the venom throats just get chewed to pieces, and they're dead. And these warriors are gonna over or gonna rapid fire into the ripper swarms. Hitting on threes. Oh, nice rolling. They're winning on threes and twos for the blacks. Lots of wounds. Six plus save. Yeah. One, two, three and one. So one, two, three, and one. And this one didn't have a six plus save, but we just, you know, who cares, it just a six plus save. Assault phase, the rays are gonna charge, and these guys are gonna charge. And he's gonna declare both of them because I can't overwatch. So let's do the rays first. So, 2d6, six inches. 
and they're technically going through difficult terrain because they actually phase through the wall, but that doesn't matter too much. So you'll have one whip coil in there to bring one guy down to initiative one with you. Now this charge is going to be a little harder, it's nine inches, but I sure hope he makes it, because I want to challenge Sobek. Nine inches! Hey, that wasn't a roll. We roll that man. It really was a roll. That wasn't a roll. Roll it. Roll it like a man. Nine inches. <laughs> he makes that. That's what I wanted. So he charges in. Sobek is ticked. Oh, that's awesome. I'm so looking forward to that. <laughs> I'm gonna, Round I'm gonna two. tear his head off, spit it out, stomp on it, and then have the rest of my Jesus destroyed by rays. So, we're going into this assault. Do you want to declare any challenges? Absolutely. Oh. Awesome. You're going to you know, declare a challenge? There's a chip on that guy's shoulder. The Brood Lord accepts your challenge! <laughs> so we actually switched this out, which is interesting because, yeah, we'll just move them over because then you guys will start to pile in against the other Gene Stealers. So let's do that fight last. Okay. Just because it's really epic. And so the Gene Stealers get to go first. So this is the weird thing about challenges. Now this guy's not in base contact with those guys. So, but I'll just say that he's yeah, he pile into those guys. So three inches to get him into. Hey, out of the way, Sobek. Kill those wolves. And move over and start killing as many as possible. So it looks like four guys can get into that combat. And this guy will have to kind of stay as a bridge. And these four guys, because one is initiative one. So these four guys against that, and these four against that. So four against the war immortals first. So hitting on threes. Oh. And winning on fours, re-rolling. Come on. That's right. So two die and three saves. Three plus. Oh, so two, two nearest, because that will decrease how many of them can fight back. And four gene slayers against the raids. Hitting on threes. Oh, come on, rolls. Why can't I roll like Steve? Wounding on fours, re rolling. Oh, it's below average. Come on, above average now. Yay, above average. Rating doesn't matter. Three plus and vulnerable. Oh, only one wound! What is going on with these guys? So I'm just going to put this one right here, just to represent yeah. the closest guy right there. And then my last guy will attack, and you'll, if, I, if he kills him, you'll still get to attack back. Three attacks, hit on threes, two hits, winning on fours, one wound, re-rolled, two wounds. So three plus, and he oh. fails it, so he dies, but he still gets to attack because that was at initiative one. So this one with the whip coils is going to die. I'll pull him out right now, but he does get his attacks. Yeah. Off! Hitting on fours, 20 attacks from the race. Oh, yay, you missed a bunch. Two men. Wow, actually, you missed, you missed a lot. And winning on twos, rending. Uh -oh. oh, so two go down, and then I got a five plus save from the rest. And I make one, so only three die. So that means you're losing combat by one right now. I'm just gonna take that guy out of the wave right now and then remove three. There we go, one, two, three. The Immortals are going to pile in. It looks like four of them will be able to attack. So, eight attacks. Eight attacks from the four Immortals, hitting on fours. So, four hits. Hitting on fours. Two wounds. Five plus save. Oh, oh now he's winning combat by one. So, they just two go down. So, now he's winning combat by one. But then we've got our epic fight of epicness between the Prude Lord and the Overlord. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Brood Lord goes first. Da, 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 da. Four attacks. Make what? Shackles. Oh, mind shackles, Karen. I hate mind shackles. Who's made in Leadership 10 on three dice. Ah! Oh, I failed! So I hit myself for D3 times. Once. Yes. And it's uh, wounds on a four plus. Re rolling. Re roll. Nope. Oh, Yay! Okay. Well, so Overlord Sobek gets a strike. Four attacks, hitting on fours. Oh, he did three. Two's the wound, no saves. Oh, I survived. So I'm down to one wound. You win combat, but I'm fearless. So it's your turn, so you pile in first. And then we're going into the Tyranids. Two uh, resurrections. Oh, two resurrections for immortals. Four plus. One's up. Everybody's gonna pile in three inches. Then you resurrect one of them in the back. And that is the end of Necron's turn four. So it's not looking too good for the Tyranids. Oh, they almost did it. They damaged the Necron Scythe Matrix, but weren't able to kill it. But we're gonna go to the Tyranids' turn four and see what happens. So Ripper Swarm moves up. Warriors are gonna move in, see if they can tie up some of these rays. You know, these warriors are gonna fire at the objective because it's not locked in combat or anything. It's got a two plus save though, but who knows? 
Three death spinner shots into the objective. So I got nine shots to do three wounds. Yeah, I don't think so, but we'll see. Force to hit. Uh, five hits. So I've got to roll three sixes and then he's got to roll three ones. Anybody want to do the math on that? It is one out of roughly 40,000 chance of happening. Well, okay. Because well, it's six times six times six. It's 200 and something. It's like around 200. So one out of 200 chance that I make that. And then a one out of 200 chance that you roll triple ones. I'm still working on a six by six. Six times six is 36. You times six would be 216 or 18. You need a calculator and some toast. <laughs> it's a toast. <laughs> So I'm just saying, it's a 1 in 40,000 chance that this succeeds. If this happens... <laughs> then go, buy, then go buy a lottery ticket, right? It. <laughs> yeah. No sixes! Okay. Much more likely. <laughs> that math was way off. I just realized, because I wasn't rolling three dice, I was rolling five. So I have no idea what the chance of that. But it was higher, it was better than what I said. Probably not much better. Not, not much better. No. Four spine fist! Fire! Right. Four attacks. On fives. Two hits. Reroll. Three hits. <laughs> Winning on four fives. Nothing. Salt phase. These guys are charging in. Just to see if they can lend some support. And I'm not going to charge. <laughs> so you're forced to take care of it. I'm just going to stay there going, nah, 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 nah. What does the Ripper Swarm say? Steve? I got nothing. <laughs> Mind went blank. It'd be like a crickety, chittery sound, no? Okay, so how does that go? What talk. does the Ripper Swarm say? How's <laughs> <Awesome. laughs> that? That's great. Okay, so this big ongoing blobbery blob of a, co of a combat will end once again with Sobek and the Broodlord, who will hopefully make his Mind Shackle Scares roll this time and slice you into tiny little pieces. But I'm just not feeling very confident of that anymore. So, Gene Steelers first. They're all at their full initiative. So we got two on the Warriors and three on the Spiders. Uh, the Rays. Six attacks on the Immortals, so threes to hit. Okay, fours to wound. Rend, that's right. No, ironically, that's only half as many kills as last time, even though I completely failed it. You can take it from the back, because yeah, they're gonna pile it. And then the three on the raise. We'll do much better than the other two. Threes to hit. Much, no, there's four twos. I guess it's better, just not much better. Fours to hit, four, fours to wound re-rolling. Come on, I want five. Not three. Nope. You're running, huh? but they're invulnerable. Three plus invulnerable. Oh, hit the race. Six. Yeah, hit the race. Three plus. Uh -oh. Yay, one died. So this guy goes down, which is great. There's four less attacks on me. Gives me a chance of actually winning this fight. And then we got the three warriors who are going to attack the race. Twelve attacks, hitting on threes, winning on fours. Oh. There's a bunch of ones and twos. And wounding on fours. Come on, guys. Two wounds. Fail both. Yeah. Oh, I need you to fail both. And he is down to one wound. I'll just keep that up there. So these three race will fight back against the warriors. Nine attacks in on fours. Oh, only three hits. Winning on twos. One wound. Four plus save. Oh, come on. I couldn't make the one save. One. <laughs> so bring us the closest down to two wounds. And now the immortals on the gene stealers. Immortals attacking, hitting on fours. Oh, three hits. Wounding on fours. Two wounds. Five plus save. Saved! Yay! Oh, wow! So I'm actually winning combat by three right now. So I'm going to win combat no matter what, because even if you kill the Broodlord, it's only one more wound. But if I kill your Overlord, then the chances of them running are very, very high. So I'm going to win combat by at least two. So you've got a Leadership 8 check at least coming your way. So, let's go into the epic combat of epicness. Got our Mind Shackle Scares roll to make. Ah, come on, Leadership 10! Yo! Oh, yes! I failed it! Failed it with just two of them. Three hits on myself. One. Has he allowed to hit his own unit? No, we, we've always treated the, them separately. So I wound myself on a four. I wound myself, but I have a four plus save. Come on. No, oh, the brood lord <laughs> dies to himself. He's got his mind shackle scares running through his head and he just couldn't stand it and he died. So that, I guess that, does that, I guess that counts as a challenge kill, doesn't it? Kind of. We'll, we'll, just, we'll just say yes. It doesn't really matter. Well, it does matter for you upgrading your guy, because in order to upgrade your guy, you either have to win the mission or win at least one challenge. And we'll say that's a win for a challenge. So, but that does not finish it, though. These guys are fearless, and all my guys are fearless, but these guys are not fearless. So Sobek might actually run. 
He might, maybe he doesn't like the sight of blood. He's a bit of a coward. <laughs> a bit of a <laughs> coward. Know that. <laughs> Leadership eight test, because the, the Necrons actually lost by two. Leadership eight! Oh, you uh -huh. made it! Oh, I can't believe it. Reanimation of four plus, and the guy stands back up. And the one immortal stands back up. And this time I pile in first, so we'll just pile in like this. And he'll pile in a little bit, and then your guys pile in. And that's it. So that is the end of Tyranids turn four. So we're gonna go into Necrons turn five. Now it's not looking too good for the, the Tyranids. There is a chance they could win this, but very little because we got these Scarab Swarms here who can tie things up. But uh, we're just gonna jump right into it. Necrons turn five. So not really much place for the, all these warriors in the back to go. So they're just gonna kind of push forward a little bit. The scarabs are just gonna move forward for now. This guy's gonna rapid fire into that one poor little Ripper Swarm. Hitting on threes. Winning on threes, no save. Dead. Who would have thunk it? Speed bump destroyed. And these guys are gonna fire into the warriors. Hitting on threes. Oh, jeez. Force. What are you doing? Oh, Four enough. plus save. Can I roll like that? Oh, not, yeah, bad. not bad. So one dies. The guy in the front dies. So jumping right into this assault. First things first. Mind shackle scarabs on the one gene stealer. Leadership ten. Eight. Come on, roll a one or two. Nope. He fails it. So he hits his own guys for D three attacks. Two attacks, winning on four is re-rolling. One wound, four plus, five plus save. Not I'll have him kill himself so that I can get more attacks. So two of them will go on the immortals and the other two on the wraiths. Threes to hit against the immortals. Four is to wound, re-rolling. Oh, that was a six. So two dead plus a save. Oh. oh, three go down, wow. So what we should actually do so one of them dies from the, the so, rending. Yep. So the question is, do you want to look out, sir, on him? That's what we should have determined well, first. Well, you rolled it. Uh, I wouldn't have. You wouldn't have. Okay, so then he's got to make a three plus and vulnerable. Because he's already made the two plus. Three plus and vulnerable? He makes it. So what happened there was we had the three wounds, and the first one killed an immortal. The second one forced a three plus and, and vulnerable, and the other one's a two plus armor. And he had to roll the two for that one. So a little convoluted, but ends up only costing him one guy instead of three. And then two gene sellers against the raids. Threes to hit. That's better. Fours to wound. Rerolled. Three wounds. Ooh. Five wounds. Three plus and vulnerable. So the one oh. in the front dies. Way above average for these three pluses, but still, picked off a guy. Then we got nine attacks from the warriors. Hitting on threes. Just can't roll really high with these guys. Wounded on fours. Oh, okay, I take that back. Four hits. Three plus. Yay, uh -oh. another one dies. Doesn't matter, they're both in base, so you choose. So that way you'll drop me down to initiative one next next round. So mortals, everybody's piled in as much as they can. So I, th I still think that gets everybody in though. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven immortals. Hitting on fours. I'm gonna charge on this one. Winning on fours. Come on, so above average. Five plus save, let me get three of these. Only one. See, that was average. Why didn't you roll average? I don't know. Overlord Sobek was already in base contact, so he gets to attack as well. Three attacks hitting on fours. Oh, wounding on twos. <laughs> Two wounds. That actually kills the rest of the Gene Stealers and lets you win combat by one. So these guys pile in three inches, and then I pile in three inches. And we're not in base contact, so these guys will Just actually be now? they'll actually be out of combat. So they'll consolidate from the three inches. So they'll, they'll move forward three and then consolidate. Resurrect the one immortal? Nope. Nope. So that is the end of turn it, or Necron turn five. So I've obviously got to use my two warriors to charge in because all I got left are these five warriors. If they get super lucky and make these guys run and then they survive their, all the shooting and attacking from everybody else, then I can try to destroy the objective with these guys. So not looking good, but maybe I can stop him from doing it. So let's move forward first off. I'm gonna stay like this so the two mortals are closest. Death spitters firing, hitting on one hit. One wound. Oh. Hey, one goes down. Reanimation. He gets oh, back up. Go. And then I get to declare a charge, and you get to Overwatch. 14 shots in the Overwatch. Hitting on sixes, one hit. One. Wounding on threes. One wound, four plus save. Oh wait, no, it's AP four. So it doesn't matter, I took a wound. And then I'll have no problem making this charge, so I won't even roll it. So I go first in that one, so I'll have eight attacks. Hitting on threes. That's a good solid hit. Fours. Four wounds. Overlord's not gonna look out, sir, so start with the immortal up front. He's fine. He's fine. He's oh, dead, no. and then a two plus save on the overlord. 
He's fine. So the one goes down, and then these guys will pile in. And then it looks like you'll have four immortals in, plus the overlord. Hitting on fours. And winning on fours with the whites and twos with the black. So three wounds on these ones. So two wounds in total. And that finishes off this guy. So you win combat, but I'm fearless. So it doesn't matter, so I'll just pile in. And then these three will, actually, because these two are in base, this one will attack, and then you'll get to attack. Hitting on threes, three attacks, so two hits, fours, no wounds. Oh. Attacks back on fours, one hit, and then twos, one wound. another one, and then these two will attack. Six attacks, hitting on fours. Wow, <laughs> wounding on fours. Two wounds. Fail both of these. Oh, so close. So he's down to one wound, and that's a tight combat with two fearless units. And that is when I'm going to concede because we're just going to watch fearless units against fearless units slowly hacking each other to pieces, but there's no way I can win because these Scarab Swarms can just jump in and make everything a mess. And by the time I finally, if, if I finally win these combats, we've got these guys swinging in in reserve. So it's uh, definitely a Necron victory, wiping out the Tyranids altogether and managing to repair their Scythe Matrix and get it back online. It was close though. Not because I was beating your guys up too bad, because you haven't suffered very many casualties, but because I actually almost destroyed the Scythe Matrix. We're halfway down. Yeah, down to three wounds. Uh, if I had just rolled one of those Mind Shackle Scarabs <laughs> and messed up your unit, or you failed one of those leadership tests, and maybe I would have been able to finish it off. But just too little too late at the end. Those Canotech units coming in really yeah. provided you the extra firepower yeah. you needed. Those, those rays just uh, tying up everything and doing lots of damage. Rescuing these guys over there so they could activate their last objective. And, uh, and then coming in and basically really supporting everything. Without them, I think you would have lost. I think so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because that would have given me enough time to finish off that objective before everybody else could get in there. So, good game. Very good. So you will have those in one of the mission threes. Nice. So not the one that we're about to post in the vault. For you vault members, where we're going to find out what happens over at the the Necron Outpost, the communications array. We're going to go and do that right now. So vault members, go and check it out by clicking on the link in the video description below. And everybody else, you can become a vault member for free for seven days by clicking on the link below and just following the instructions there. So you can see it instantly as well as all future and past campaigns and battle reports and painting tutorials and everything else that's in the vault. So I hope that you enjoyed this. Overlord Sobek got his revenge. Stay tuned. For more of the Tyranid Necron campaign of the Battle of the Tomb World Fayum, this is Matthew from Any Wargaming. Happy Wargaming. They only need six inches for the charge. Oh. Five. Yes. Oh. <laughs> that Ghost Ark does not want to die. Okay, so we'll start with this combat against the Annihilation Barge. So they got ten attacks total because they have.